Hello there! Did you enjoy The Sweetest Death? I hope you did. Here's a fun thing. The Sweetest Death is... kind of a remake? So, back when the Ice Bucket Challenge was a thing... Do you remember when the Ice Bucket Challenge was a thing? I decided I was gonna make my Ice Bucket Challenge contribution a horror movie. No. Some shots from that particular little video that's on the internet might seem familiar to some of you. But this is not the first time I have plagiarised myself. Oh no, I do it all of the time. All of the damn time. Way back in October, I uploaded uh, a little thing called Empty House. It's kind of terrible because it doesn't have a decent ending. However, I'd already basically made half of that film before in a little thing that I did uh, called just a little horror proof of concept. Lots of similarities. The biggest similarity is this shot. Let's just... Let's just watch both of them. Yeah, it's, it's the same. It's, I, I just, I stole from myself. I kind of have a series of things on my channel that I think of as the basement horror movies, uh, which is The Sweetest Death, Ice Bucket Challenge, Empty House, and The Proof of Concept. People in the basement or coming up from the basement and getting killed or spooked. It's like, it's like it's a genre of short film that I make. The proof of concept film video thing is actually a repurposing of another film that I wrote, uh, and I wrote it way back in university, never got made. Uh, I wrote it in first year, and it's about a guy who goes crazy and thinks he's a werewolf and kills his flatmates. I was in a good place in my first year of university. A good place. If you want to stay tuned on this channel, there is a video about my mental health coming out. Shameless plug of future videos. If we're going to look at things that I've previously written but not actually made, and how elements of those found their way into things that I did make, uh, about two years ago, just over two years ago, I wrote a film about a guy who's trying to hide a body in his flat from uh, this girl who's coming to visit. And I still really like that film, and I still want to get it made if I can. Um, but, yeah, that made its way into Don't. That definitely made its way into Don't. A guy trying to hide a body, doing a pretty terrible job, letting people into his house, which is a bad idea. There you have the basis of Don't. Here is a really fun one, and it's me copying a thing that I did actually make. So back in 2012, seven years ago, I made a vlog slash short film thing that is about two minutes long. Uh, it's called Time Travel Glasses, where, I, I, I mean, it's a, it's a time travel paradox film. It's, it's the OG time travel paradox film by Matthew D. Gilpin, and my god is it terrible. The time-travelling glasses. I was so posh. If you're lucky, I might use them in a, a video in future. I, w I was... I was such a posh 16-year-old. Wait! Stop! If you don't show that those time-travelling glasses work, you'll look really stupid. This video will get more dislikes than Friday. I was such a posh 16-year-old. If you're here, surely that's... Surely that's enough proof that the glasses work. Oh god. Please stop talking. The Docs, everyone's favourite of my short films, uh, apparently. Thousand views, thank you very much. You're all amazing. It is not the first film noir that I've made. Not by a long shot. So I've written a bunch of noir things before I wrote that. I tried to make a noir adaptation of Macbeth because I think that would be amazing. Isn't it just double indemnity? Lady Macbeth would be a great femme fatale. That's what I'm trying to say. A femme fatale is a woman who is dangerous and manipulative and will probably kill you 
just like in the docs. So I wrote many things, including that. Uh, but way back in AS Media, I made a little noir style thriller thing that was kind of was meant to be sci-fi, but it wasn't really. There were like drugs. I I say I made it, but I kind of only half directed it. I kind of only a quarter directed it, really. But it was noirish. <laughs> But if you go back even further to GCSE coursework, I made this weird little thing called Shifting Shadows, which was meant to be the opening to a film, but it looks a lot more like a trailer slash a music video. Yeah, it's, it's a whole thing. And if you watch that, you can see all of the noir tropes on display by 15-year-old filmmaker Matthew. You've got the metaphorical prison cell bars, you've got the sexy femme fatale, although it's a 15-year-old actress, so probably not a good idea to say that. You've got a guy in a hat, you've got all these shadows, you think that he's suspicious, but then she kills him. Oof. Ah, It's basically the docs. You're right. It's not weird to have copied a lot of your own stuff. I think it's important to remember that at this stage, that like, a lot of creative people who do creative work have copied themselves in the past, and not all of them have realised that they've done it. Um, and I have a great story about this. My friend Josh, who's a wonderful musician, he did a cover way, way back of Green Day's Holiday. And in that cover, he added a guitar solo, like an extra guitar solo that wasn't in the original song. Flash forward a few years, he's writing some of his own music. He writes this song and he needs a guitar solo for it. He's like, oh, this feels about right. Yeah, I'll just play that. A few months later, he comes to me and says, Matthew, I've plagiarised myself. This solo is note for note the same as the solo that I added to Holiday. It is exactly the same. Listen to this. Nothing is original, everything is a remake. It's 2019, is it too late to like, ironically dab? Because I don't care. <laughs>